So we have learned how to go between K of an acid and the concentration, okay, of whatever is in there. And now we're ready to kick it up a notch. We're going to start having mixtures of acids and we're going to be able to calculate the pH of those mixtures. We're going to have three different scenarios we're going to look at. We're going to look at when we mix together two strong acids, okay, and then um, it could be three or four, but we'll look at two, okay. We're going to look at mixtures where one of them is strong and the rest are weak. Then we're going to look at what if there's multiple weak acids and see how these play out. So we're going to start with a mixture of strong acids. We know that when we mix strong acids, they both 100% ionize. And we know that the concentration of the H3O plus is the concentration, I mean the concentration of the acid is the concentration of the H3O plus. But this is happening in two places. I'm going to take a beaker and in this beaker I've got um, 10 milliliters of 0 0.10 molar, uh, what is it, HCl, and I think through my list of acids, they, ah, that's a strong acid. And then I also have a beaker and in this beaker there's 20 milliliters of 0.2 molar and it's of HBr. And I go through my list, say, ah, oh, that's a strong acid. And I dump them together into a bigger beaker. Okay? Now, in this beaker, I want to know the pH. So what do I need to know? In order to get the pH, I need the H3O plus concentration in here. Okay? I don't want it in here and in here. I want it in here, the H3O plus concentration. Well, what is the H3O plus concentration in that beaker? Okay? It would be the total moles of H3O plus that came out of this beaker and this beaker and the total volume of, a, of the solution in the two beakers. Well, that bottom one's pretty quick and easy. I had 30, 20 milliliters here and 10 milliliters. That's 30 milliliters. I need it in liters, right? So I have 0 0.030 liters. 30 milliliters is 0 0.030 liters. And so I know that part. I need to get the total moles. So let's call this solution one and let's call this solution two. In solution one, we can get the moles of H3O plus that are in here. And how many moles are in here, wouldn't they all go into here? So I'd know how many moles got put in there. So how do I do that? The molarity of HCl is the molarity of H plus, right? So I have 0 0.10 moles of H3O plus per liter. That's the molarity. And if I multiply by the volume, but I need to have it in liters, so it's point 0.010 liters, that's going to give me 0 0.0010 moles of H3O plus that were in this first beaker. So I know that I have 0 0.0010 plus, okay, there's going to be some more there here in just a moment. So in beaker number two, I'm going to do exactly the same thing in beaker number two. I've got a molarity of acid of 0.2. Since it's strong, this is the molarity of the H3O plus because all of them form from that. So I have the molarity of H3O plus. If I multiply by how many liters I have, which is 0.020 liters, that will give me 0 0.0040 moles of H3O plus. So I can put that here, 0 0.0040. So I add those two numbers together and divide by 0 0.03, and that would be the total H3O plus concentration in my combined beaker. Okay? So what does that give me? It gives me 0 0.167. Okay? It's somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2. That makes sense. It's closer to 0.2 because there's more of it. That makes sense, so that's my H3O plus concentration. But what did they want to know in this problem? Once we have that, we go back to the question, and we're supposed to determine 
um, the H3O plus, knowing all of it, and then we go down to the next line, it says, what is the pH of the solution? Well, I know that the pH can be determined by taking the negative log of the H3O plus concentration that we just figured out, 0 0.167. And that gives me a pH. Well, what would you expect it to be? A high number or a low number? Well, it's quite a low number. 0 0.78 is the pH. So it's less than 1. Um, pH of 1 is when you have a 0.1 molar solution. And this is even more concentrated than that. So it drops it down a little bit lower. So that's the situation where both of them are strong. You just have to do an atom together. In, in order to work the problem. So now we have a situation where one is strong and one is weak, or if you had more than one, the rest of them are weak. Now strong acids are way, way stronger than our weak. So we've talked about that several times. Strong acids ionize 100%, weak acids way less, and we're talking way less, less than 1% as much. So all you have to do is consider the strong acid when you do your calculations. This is the easiest possible scenario, is where one of them is strong and the rest are just weak acids. This is like taking a dump truck of coal and adding one little piece of uh, sand on top and you're like, did it make it heavier? No. The amount of H3O plus that gets added to the acid solution is so minuscule compared to that strong acid. So I have a problem here that we're going to work and we read through and we realize that we're calculating a pH which is what we do a lot in this chapter and it tells me it's 0.1 molar HCl and 0.4 molar hypochlorous acid HClO4 and we see a value of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. It doesn't matter what that is because when I look at that I say all I need to know is the information about the strong acid HCl. And we know that the concentration of the HCl is the concentration of the H3O plus because it ionizes 100%. So I have 0 0.10 molar as the H3O plus concentration. Well, if I want to know the pH, we just have to take the negative log of that number. Okay, and that's one. So done, that's it. When it's a mixture of strong acid and a weak acid or multiple weak acids, you can, once you know the concentration. Now the only way we can put a challenge to this is if we'd say, all right, I'm going to take 10 milliliters of the 0.1 molar and add it to 50 milliliters of the 0.4 molar. It's telling me how much I'm mixing of both and it's telling me what it is before we mix them and I have to dilute them together and do some work. Here I'm saying the mixture already, I know already in the mixture what the concentration is, so I don't have that complicating factor. So now we have a mixture, and it's a scenario where every acid is a weak acid. And if you're given a situation like we have here, I have two weak acids, I will promise to you that when you're working problems for us in this class, one of those weak acids will be significantly stronger than the other weak acid. So I've given you HNO2 and its Ka value, and I've given you HCN and its K value. My question for you, which of those acids is the stronger acid? Well, it's HNO2, and I know this because it has the larger Ka. Now what you may not realize is how much larger that is. Because you're looking at those two numbers and they both look really tiny to you. But I want you to think about the difference between the number one and the number one million. Okay? This one is 10 to the six times larger than the one. And we have a real good feel of the difference of that. If somebody said, I'll give you a dollar, you say, oh, thanks. He said, I'll give you a million dollars, you are just really happy about that because you know that's so much bigger. We have that, that sense of that. Well, when I look at those two numbers, the difference of 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 10 is still this difference. So we're talking a million times stronger. They're both weak. <laughs> just imagine how weak the HCN is, therefore. Okay, so when you have a situation where you have two weak acids given to you, Find the one that's stronger, and you can work the problem, since it's so much, so much stronger than the other guy, you can work the problem on the stronger of the two. So we are going to focus in on the HNO2, the stronger of the two acids. We're going to write the reaction. Don't skip this step. 
okay? Write the reaction, oh, liquid, sorry, for the proton swap. So the acid donates to the water, forming this ion. The water accepts that substance and it turns into H3O+. I'll leave room for an I C E table underneath it, okay? I don't worry about the HCN whatsoever. And then I have a Ka given me for that, so I'm gonna go ahead and write the Ka expression. Again, don't skip this step. Now, if you've been doing chemistry for years, eventually you can kind of hold this thing in your head, but don't rush yourself. It doesn't take that much time to write this out for the equilibrium. Oh, that's a two. Okay, so now I've written that reaction. I've written my expression, and my pen is just not writing very good, and I don't like the way that's showing up at all. <laughs> oh, well. Let's move on. All right, so now what do we have? We look at the problem and they're giving me the initial concentration of the HNO3 as 0.1. Don't care about the water. I have none. I essentially have none. I use up some of this because there's no other numbers for me to plug into this table. There's nothing else given to me in the problem, so I have all of this given to me. Now I take my expression and I take my value of K, which is 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is equal to X squared over 0 0.10 minus X. Now I told you that when K is small, you can do an assumption. I told you also that that's usually when it's 10 to the minus 5. Um, this is a little iffy here, but it's sure worth trying and not having to use the quadratic. So I'm going to assume I will later check my assumption that x is much, much smaller than 0 0.10. That allows me to ignore this term right here. I'm going to ignore that x. And then I'm going to multiply by 0 0.10. So I have 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4 times the denominator brought over here is equal to x squared. Then I will take the square root of both sides, and that will give me an x value. And the x value is equal to, let me grab my paper here, 6.8 times 10 to the minus 3. And that would be the assumption, I mean, if the assumption hold, that would be the concentration of H3O+. Plus but we should check our assumption, okay? So we're gonna check the assumption. Now, what I assumed is that x is so small that when I subtract it from 0.10, it does not change the value. Let's see if that's true. When I take 0.10 and I subtract 6.8 times 10 to the minus three, I actually do change the number. And it changes ever so slightly, but it changes to the value of 0 0.0933. That changed, so this was significant. So the assumption wasn't great. Now, is it bad enough that I shouldn't, if it's a sapling problem, <laughs> if it's on our online homework, maybe I'd go ahead and base it upon that because we accept it plus or minus 2%. But I checked it for a reason, okay? I wanna show you what to do. You got two choices. You can say, huh, actually it's three choices. Eh, it's good enough, let's try it, okay? It's a test question, ah, what the heck? It's just four points, whatever, you know? You might do that. You might say, well, I did this so I would avoid the quadratic. Let me go do the quadratic equation. That's, a, that's not fun. But here is the last option I wanna show you. This is what I would rather do than a quadratic any day. I wanna take this value that I see right here that I came up with. Oops. Actually, this is the value I came up with. And I wanna plug it into here. I'm taking the x that I got, the x that I got. Let me do it from down here. That's my check, we'll ignore it. I take my x that I got and say, okay, I'm not gonna assume it's zero anymore. I'm gonna assume it's what I got, okay? So now I'll take the 4.6 times 10 to the minus four. I'm not gonna change this, but right down here where I assumed it was zero, I'm going to now assume it's what I got the first time. 
and I'm going to solve for x, okay? And when I solve for x in this case, I ended up with 6.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Did it change? Yes. First time it's 6.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Now it's 6.5 times 10 to the minus 3. I don't know if that's right or not yet. All I need to do this is keep doing it until it doesn't change. So the next time, I'm going to take this x and plug it in here and say, I'm going to assume this is a little bit better assumption. So I take the 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4. And I know you might be getting tired of me writing it out, but I want to make sure you're seeing it in its entirety. In place of where the x was, I'm going to put this new x. Okay, and when I solve for x for this one, I'm going to end up with 6.5 again. No, I'm going to get up 6.6. .6. Change a little bit again. So what it does is it bounces. It hits and it bounces on the other side of it and gets closer and closer until it keeps giving you the same value. Now I did this one more time and I saw that it didn't change. It got 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3 again. So I say, I like that number. I'll put a smiley face next to it. That's the one I want to work with. Now, you might decide, I'd rather do the quadratic than that. I wouldn't. Quadratic has so many places to make little mistakes with your signs and that sort of thing that I'd rather do this iteration, okay, where you're doing successive approximations. You first approximated that it's zero, it makes no difference. Then you say, okay, it wasn't zero, let's try this one. Okay, it wasn't zero, let's try this one. And we did it until it didn't change, and then I like it. Now, we finally have that value. That's a demonstration of what to do when your assumption and your check don't hold true. But what were we trying to calculate? We were trying to calculate the pH of this solution. Well, the pH is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration, and that's what I finally figured out here. This is the H3O plus concentration, because it is X, and X is what the H3O plus concentration is. So then I can take the negative log of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus, oh goodness gracious, minus three, and that will give me the pH. Now, I don't have the value for that because when I did the work that I brought in, I forgot to do the check. Once I did the check, I saw it change. It is going to be on close to 2.2, okay? It's going to be approximately 2.2, but put it in your calculator and see what the actual value is. Okay, so that is a mixture where both of them are weak. What we're going to do in our next lesson is start focusing on doing calculations with bases.